I'm Savannah Zambrano, an Arts Westchester teaching artist. Welcome to today's Arts Westchester virtual workshop. Today we will be making cutout comics. Um, it's a little bit different than regular comics because you're going to have to cut some stuff out. Alright, the supplies you're going to need are a ruler or something with a straight edge. So, tape. <laughs> it could be masking tape, it could be clear tape. Uh, color pencils or crayons or markers, anything to add some color. You can even use a highlighter. Okay, you're gonna need a pencil, pen, and a marker. Again, if you don't have the specific, the exact same um, supplies that I do, don't worry about it. Um, find something else that can, you know, interchange it. It's fine. And some scissors. All right, and finally, you need some paper. A few sheets of paper will do. All right, so if you have a sketchbook or just regular computer paper works too. And um, yeah, let's get started. Um, I'll be taking this outside, so I'll also be grabbing my mask, but you can stay comfortable at home. <laughs> I found an empty video by the river to set up. It's a little windy, but you will still be able to follow along. The benefit of workshops on video is that you can pause at any moment to catch up. All right, so let's start off with thinking how many panels our comic is gonna have. So I already know that the story I wanna tell can be told quickly in two panels. When you're reading comics, each box is considered a panel and the pacing is generally the spacing in between the box. So what happens between one part of the story and another part of the story? It's up to you as the storyteller to decide how quickly the action flows in your comic. Unlike making a comic on paper or in a computer where everything needs to go in a direct flow, I know that I'm going to be cutting out my pieces. So I started by drawing the word balloons and the thought bubble. So some of you might already know what kind of story you're gonna tell. But if you don't, having the shape already determined can help you decide the amount of text the characters use to talk to each other. When it comes to word balloons and thought bubbles, they don't always have to be round. You can use different shapes or even squares and triangles. So if I was telling a story about a robot, I would probably use rectangles for their word balloons. This way people know that their voice sounds more metallic or like a computer. But since I'll be using animals to tell my story, I decided to keep my word balloons and thought bubbles more organic in the common roundish shape that most word balloons and thought bubbles are in actual comics. So now I'm drawing my characters. I'm keeping them simple since I said my story will be told in two panels. However many times you draw the character will determine how your story is being told, how much action happens, what they're doing. So my characters will be talking and I'm showing you which word balloon will belong to which character. So since my characters are so simple, I'm not using a pencil, <laughs> but you can use a pencil first to make sure you get it drawn the way that you'd like it. Also, I'm keeping my character design very simple, but if you have a more developed art style and you want to make your drawings a little bit more complicated, that's fine too. Just keep in mind that we will be cutting out these characters and word balloons. So the more edges and the harder it is to cut around, the more work you have later. So how much time do you have to devote to this project? What are you going to be doing with it? Where are you going to be placing it? These are things you need to think about when you're making your comic. So just now I pointed to the thought balloon. And if you notice on the paper, there's not a lot of space at the bottom. So sorry this is getting drawn off at the top. You can see I'm drawing just the rabbit head and her shoulders, okay? This is because this is the first panel in the comic that I will be uh, showing at the end. Even though we can only see the half of the rabbit face, you can tell that her expression is a little bit different. Using facial expressions can help uh, show emotion and feelings in your comics too. 
So it's fun to practice in the mirror and you can draw different facial expressions. Or if you, you know, have a cell phone or access to a tablet, you can even use emojis. They're a fun way to get an expression or emotion across. For this cutout comic, I'm using color pencils to color my characters. I color them in lightly so that if I want to layer, I'll be able to. The important thing about using color pencils or even regular pencils is to work from light to dark. The harder you press with the pencil, the harder it is to blend colors or to erase. So keeping this in mind, uh, try your best not to dig into the paper too much. Build the color gradually, going in light layers, until you get the desired effect. Another tip when making cutout comics is to color before you cut everything out. Sometimes if you're using thinner paper, if you color after you cut out, sometimes you can wrinkle the paper or tear it. So by having everything colored beforehand, you reduce that risk. So what is a cutout comic? It's an installation piece a way to interact with your environment and tell a story by putting characters and word balloons that don't generally belong there. I like using cutout comics to talk to my roommates when I know I won't be seeing them for a while. Sometimes I'll get a text, hey, I found that comic you left in the bathroom. Oh my gosh, you put a cartoon character on my milk carton. And I like to think that it brightens their day. All right. Now we have all our pieces. Carefully cup them out and keep track of where your fingers are. Very important. Because I had a time limit and I wanted to finish this quickly, I kept my comic short and sweet. Also, when you are making your own cutout comics, you can make it as long as you want. But you gotta keep in mind that means you're gonna be putting more work into it, more cutting out, more drawing, more coloring, more storytelling. So do what you feel would work best for you. How much time do you have? How much space do you have? Will you be telling the story at home or outside? It's always important to think a little bit ahead before you start taking on a larger project. A tip for when you're planning your cutout comics. I recommend sketching them first on a sketchbook or a scrap sheet of paper. This way you can plan how it looks before you start cutting everything out and drawing everything out. It'll save you time and it'll help you make a more believable story if that's what you're looking for. So if you notice, the little tail of this thought balloon has thicker lines around it. The reason I did that is so that I can cut all the pieces out together as one piece instead of having to individually cut out every little balloon. Then that means I would have to tape a whole bunch of little pieces. So when you're working on your cutout comic, make sure to think simple. It's gonna help you out in the end. Okay, so all the pieces are cut out, so I can assemble it and write in the word balloons. If you wanna write them in before you cut it out, that works too. Some people like to write the words first and then draw the shape around it. I think that works as well. Again, think simple. Try to keep it so that your life isn't so complicated. So I'm in a park 
and I wanted to tell a story that anyone would understand if they've been to a big park. Sometimes you might get lost or sometimes you might not find the people you're looking for. I also wanted to be able to tell the story in as little words as possible since it's only going to be uh, technically two panels or two boxes. So where are you telling your story? How many word balloons are you going to be using? Keeping this in mind will help you when you're designing your own cutout comic. Another way you can use cutout comics is kind of like a scavenger hunt. Maybe you'll set the first character and word balloon in a location where you know someone will see it. And maybe the word balloon will have a clue to where to find the next character. This can be a fun way to pass the time or to surprise someone with something special. It is up to you. Your imagination, your creativity is what will make this project super fun and engaging to anyone you want to share it with. Finally, assembly. I put my comic on a brick wall, using the spaces between the bricks as the panel borders. Where are you going to put your cutout comic? If you liked this art workshop, please visit artsw.org. I am Savannah Zambrano, an Arts West Chester teaching artist, and I hope you enjoyed making cutout comics with me.